Welcome to Terabyte Solutions series on Fishbowl Inventory. Today we're going to discuss account mappings from Fishbowl to QuickBooks. And the two things I'm hoping you'll take away today are what it is we're mapping and why we're mapping. And the third thing is how to quickly verify if your mappings are substantially correct. So with that said, the mappings in Fishbowl are based upon part types. So I'm going to come over here to my materials part and I'm going to filter for a part type inventory. Okay. And my inventory parts types have four accounts here under part and then one account over under um, product if it's something we sell. So let me just go to the product for this guy. And so the mapping right here for this guy is the sales account is attached to the product and all the inventory related accounts are attached to the part. Okay. So you'll notice we have four accounts here and we have one account over in product. And if we were using standard costs, we'd have five accounts here. Okay. So that's our inventory part. And then let me take to go to a service part. So on a service part, these are used for, you know, services we provide or services we purchase. Okay. Um, there's a whole guide to how the different part types and services that we have over on my blog at terabyte.com. And um, we have, it ha this a nice quick cheat sheet showing you the different part types and how they're used and how they impact QuickBooks. So when I go to do my mapping, when it says expense account, this is the account it's going to hit when I purchase the service, okay? Where it says cost of goods sold account, this is the account it's going to hit if my service is sold on a sales order. And then over in the, um, the product, I can have the sales account that I want my service to hit. So there's often quite a bit confusion as to what it is we're mapping when we go to the default mappings. So if I come over here to my accounting integration, um, now let's just go to reports right now. And I go into accounting and I go and say, give me my default account mappings. All right. This is, these are the, the accounts that it, it's going to hit in QuickBooks if we do not specifically map a part, okay? So when it says internal use, when it says service over here, this is the card it's gonna hit in QuickBooks, account it's gonna hit in QuickBooks when I purchase a service, not when I sell a service. So often, because these names are a little bit brief, I have a little bit better guide over here as to where everything belongs. But the fishbowl account descriptions are pretty brief. And you don't really, they're not really descriptive as to what, what we're using, okay? So AP and AR are, are no brainers, okay? Balance, this holding account is actually only used in QuickBooks Online. I don't know about zero, but it's definitely used in QuickBooks Online. And what it really means is in unbilled inventory receipts, okay? Undeposited funds, self-explanatory, capital equipment, fixed asset, okay? So internal use type parts are typically mapped to supplies or office supplies or something like that. Non-inventory is probably my one of my favorite part types and I use it a lot to get lots of different workarounds and things done in Fishbowl. But as a general rule, we could probably hit production supplies with that. The service part number here is services purchased and it is used 
extensively when we have outside processes. So I have a naked part. I send it out for um, polyester powder coating and I come back in as a dress part. So that gets used there. It can also get used in a co-manufacturing environment. So I've had several clients where the bills from their co-manufacturer came in significantly different time slots than the receiving the goods back from their co-manufacturer. So sometimes we'll map that co-man fee to the balance sheet account because we don't want distortions in our PNL due to timing differences. Labor and overhead. So the poor CPAs out there, they see labor and they see overhead and those are costs of goods sold. But what Fishbowl intends by those part types is applied labor, applied overhead, or absorbed labor, absorbed overhead. So these are contra accounts. Uh, applied labor is a contra account against my payroll. Applied overhead is a contra against, account against my overhead pool. Um, here we have our sales accounts. Just do and then over here, we have discount income and discount expense. So this, these are interesting as they really should be the same account. Um, Fishbowl kind of defines discount expense as when I offer my customer a discount. And discount income is when I get a return where they originally had a discount and I'm reversing that discount. So unless you have radical radical returns, I would suggest that both of these accounts be a contra p &L account, okay? Miscellaneous expense, I try really hard not to see anything hit there. Then here are our, these are three accounts are all for our shipping type part number. This is shipping accrual, shipping expense, and shipping income. Shipping type parts are used two places, outbound shipping, inbound shipping and other inbound um, landed costs such as uh, containers and um, customs duty etc and so on okay and there'll be more about all the different things you can do with shipping type of parts in a different different message and so now here are our standard inventory asset accounts so Cost of goods sold, the account we're going to hit when we sell it. Scrapped inventory is the account we're going to hit when we use the scrap button. <clears throat> inventory adjustment is the, is the account we're going to hit when we do any other kind of inventory adjustment. And then we have the standard cost variance account. And the inventory asset account is, of course, what we're going to hit when we buy um, those an inventory type part. So over here, each of those part types, you know, has a different way of functioning within QuickBooks. So I encourage you to read my, my blog on the eight inventory, the eight part types in Fishbowl inventory. But now, as I promised you, I'm going to show you how to quickly verify your account mappings correct. So you can use my guide to, to verify that the default mappings are hitting the right accounts. And then to see if the individual part mappings are hitting the right, right accounts, we go here to export and we go to do, 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 my favorite, favorite import export sheet, the part product and vendor pricing, otherwise known affectionately in the, in, in the Fishbowl Consulting Biz as the PPV. So next, we're going to just finish this out. I need to rename that because I practiced this earlier. Export the PPV. Come on. And I just need to give it a slightly different character. And I love this. That every time I, I do this, especially when I'm on a support session for our client machines, I, I look at this pop up and go, thank you, Dev, for giving me the ability just to open the file. 
so I don't have to hunt and peck around other people's networks for where I put it. So we've got the file open and over here column F corresponds to the part type that fish is in fishbowl. Okay. So the quick and easy way to check our individual part mappings is to highlight this whole thing, go to data and filter. And the first thing I'm going to do is going to filter on my inventory part type, which is 10. And that is also in my blog on a nice table. And then I come over and I look at the asset account and, you know, inventory assets, good inventory assets, good blank is fine because blank is going to the default that we already verified is going to inventory asset, but you know, cost of goods sold. I, when I purchase my inventory part right now, it's going to cost a good sold. So that needs to be fixed. Okay. Because these guys are going to show up on our inventory valuation reports as, as inventory, but we will have sent the dollars in QuickBooks to the PL, which is not a good thing. Now we can use this spreadsheet. If I ever learn to type, we can use the spreadsheet to correct the account coding. Okay. And import it back in. Okay. And now I found my errors in the asset account. And then I looked at my cost of goods sold account. Everything's good going to cost the goods sold or the default adjustments to the default scrap to the default and the variance account is to the default and it's not used at this point because this is an average cost file. So now I'm going to come over here to my products and I'm going to check the income account and oops, I have a mistake. So this part number, when we sell it, it's going, it's going to the cost of goods sold is called set, cost of goods sold entry is going to debit inventory and credit inventory, creating a difference between Fishbowl and QuickBooks. Okay, so I'm going to clear that, and now I'm going to look at the rest of my part types. So, all the rest of my part types, for the most part, need to be PL accounts except for the ones that match my. Um, capital equipment. So if I come here and I go looking for my mistakes, blanks are fine because they're going to the default. Shipping expense is fine because it's going to the profit and loss. Cost of goods sold is fine because it's going to the profit and loss. But anything pointing to the inventory asset is a mistake. So I come here. So what happens is when I buy these, these two parts, the dollars that I'm paying for them go to inventory asset, but when I run my valuation reports, those dollars are not reflected on my valuation report because they are not inventory type part numbers, creating a discrepancy between Fishbowl and QuickBooks. So um, that's easy to correct. We can import that back in if we'd like and make the changes and I'm going to and, oh, one more thing. I know this says asset account. And because this says asset account, a lot of times people will put an inventory asset account here for things. This, when we're talking about inventory parts that are not, we're talking about uh, fishbowl parts that are not an inventory type part. The heading of this column really should be expense account, but it's always said asset account and I doubt if it's going to change. So just know that in column P here, what we're really going to want are PL accounts for all of these other account types. Okay. So, and then we can go over here and when we sell these guys, we can check the income accounts and see if anything looks bad. Nope. We got the default and sales retail. So this will do fine. And so we're just going to save this guy and Excel things, Excel formats better than CSV format, but you know, 
I'm going to keep it a CSV. So file, import, and then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to find the part product and vendor pricing, import, aka the PPV. And I'm going to go next. I'm going to browse the one I just modified, which had, hmm, which was in documents, I think. Do, 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 do. Oh, that's desktop. Let me see. Where's my documents? Okay. And I will bring this all in and it will update my account coding and the world will be happy and Fishbowl and QuickBooks will be able to balance in the future. Thank you very much for viewing this video. And uh, we at Terabyte Solutions are a full service Fishbowl support firm. So we would like to help you um, with your fishbowl issues. Uh, give us a ring at 949-645-1019 and we will be happy to help. Thank you very much. Bye.